Corey Swarov is here for Slap News at UFC 289 with Dan Helley, the play-by-play -play commentator for Power Slap. How much do you love Vancouver? Dude, this city's unbelievable. It's the third time I've been here. The beauty is just breathtaking. I was just telling you a minute ago, I did the grouse grind and it kicked my ass about two and a half miles up the mountain. But um, no, I love it. The walkability, where we're staying. I was just talking to somebody that worked for the UFC. I said, this is what a UFC pay-per-view is supposed to be like. Great accommodations, great city, nice people. I love it. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, you know, power slap being part of the UFC. What drew you to slap fighting and power slap in the first place? You know, they had an exhibition uh, about a year and a half ago, and they brought a bunch of us in kind of as an audition. And, um, you know, I already do a bunch of stuff for the UFC, and I, I thought it was a, a cool concept. You know, it's a little crazy when you first see it, but I'll tell you what, being able to do it with Michael Bisping, I don't think there's a better guy who is more well-suited for this to bring levity and to bring seriousness when it's needed. Um, Bisping loves it. We look at each other after every show, and Damn, that was fun. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, Michael Bisming, a legend, you know, obviously getting a UFC guy like that. There are some naysayers of power slap out there. Um, you know, some of the traditional MMA guys don't like it um, per se or haven't come around to the sport yet. You know, yourself seeing it live, up front and personal, what do you have to say to those, to those naysayers? You know, it's a lot of the same comments that Dana says that I'm going to echo, you know, yeah, you, you take some hard hits, you know, in the first event that we did that was broadcast on Rumble, nine out of the 12 slap fights ended in knockouts. But you're sitting here octagon side watching these and you go through and you take, you know, 120 significant strikes over the course of three or five rounds. Um, I, I certainly don't think the damage you're taking in a three round slap fight taking three slaps is any worse than that. Absolutely, I certainly agree with you. Let's do a little recap, power slap number two. We had, we had a ton of title fights. We also had the debut of the super heavyweights. Did anything stand out from you that night that shocked you at power slap number two? You know, I thought AJ Hintz was gonna roll. He held onto the belt uh, because of a disqualification. Uh, I'm really anxious to see him get back out there. Um, Cole Young is another guy that I think uh, power slap has high hopes for. His story is unbelievable. You know, he has a uh, a child who's very sick and he's a taxidermist you know which is an interesting job and he has crazy power too so that was a draw I'm, I'm anxious to see him get back out there and then you know when Chris Thomas uh, is able to fight again I really want to see him give another go I mean you probably had the best seat in the house to the most amount of slap fights in history is there any other strikers that you haven't spoke about that you think are gonna break through as the next wave of superstars I don't think we've seen the next wave of superstars yet. I think what I'm most anxious for is when you get to the year two and year three and you're going to see guys who are training full time, uh, guys who are former MMA fighters who maybe had some more success in MMA um, and, and bring a lot more power to the table. I, I think we've just scratched the surface. I think there are a lot of guys that are really, really good. Um, I'm curious to see if some of these guys that were, um, that kind of came out of the box with a quickness, like a, like a Vern Cathy can come back after a couple of losses, because I think he's very talented as well. Um, but, you know, the ability to take a slap is just as important as the ability to deliver a slap. And I, I think that's one of the things that I like so much about AJ Hintz is with that neck strength, he generally is able to take it pretty well. I mean, you know, working, you know, with the NFL, um, you know, with many millionaires, Power slap, very, very different. Average Joes coming into this sport, you know, the money that they're receiving is changing their lives. I know you've had an opportunity to, you know, meet and speak with a lot of these fighters. What is it like on a human level to get to know these fighters coming from, you know, middle America, you know, your welders, your mechanic like Vern Cathy? What is, like, what is it like getting to know those guys personally? Yeah, John Davis, the welder. Um, they're great guys. And I think most of them are just trying to enjoy the moment and enjoy the ride. And, you know, in terms of the, the prize money, the, some of these guys are, are, are making money that is indeed changing their lives, you know. You, the, the guys on the main card, the guys in the main event, you win, you show, you, you, get, a, you get a bonus, and you, you do this three, four times a year, you're, you're talking real money, and you're talking money that's, uh, that's a big deal to a lot of these guys. And um, I I've just, I've just enjoyed watching them in the moment, be able to come to the apex, being able to train at the PI, being under the UFC umbrella. Uh, the, but the production, by the way, it, it's a UFC level production. That's what's so fun, being able to call these with Bisping. Uh, 
um, and see the way that these guys are enjoying it. It's been a lot of fun so far, and I, I think it's only going to go up as, you know, year two, year three. Heck, we got, what, the third event coming up here, International Fight Week in July. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Before we get to International Fight Week, I want to ask you a question. So actually being there in person, I was able to be there at Power Slap 1 and 2, and then watching it back on Rumble later, very different experience. You know, kind of explain to people what it's like being in the actual apex during those fights, the sound of the slaps and, and, and the energy that you feel from it. It's so different. I mean, it's so different that I want to bring a bunch of friends to watch the next power slap in July because it's like a, a gunshot goes off and then you, you, you see the guys who have 10 seconds to gather themselves and get back up during that 10 count. Um, it's nonstop excitement, and, and you can see why it has so much success on so, social media. It's built for social media, this sport is, but it's a very different feel, to your point, when you're there as opposed to watching it back on Rumble. You know, I equate it to hockey. We're in Canada, right? Yep. I, I love watching hockey live. I didn't grow up playing hockey, so I, I don't enjoy it nearly as much on TV. When you're there, I, at some point, Power Slap is going to be in a big arena, and it's going to be gnarly. Absolutely. I mean, Dana Bless is, like you said, July 7th um, at the UFC Apex as part of International Fight Week. When you got the call that Power Slap number three was happening so, so quickly, what was the first thing that crossed your mind? Well, I was a little surprised it was this quick. I knew that they were thinking July or August for the next event, uh, but I also know that they want to do, you know, four or five of these a year. I know they're talking about going international. Who knows where the next uh, reality show is going to be? There's, there's just... There's endless options uh, for Power Slap right now, but no, I love that they're gonna they're gonna have this. I mean, I, I think once a quarter is kind of the goal in terms of having the events of Power Slap. I mean, Dana announced that the second season of the reality show is gonna go to Abu Dhabi. If they ask you to go to Abu Dhabi and do After Slap, is that something you'd sign up for? I'd sign up for all of it, man. Feed me. I love it. I, I really do. Um, and we have such a great crew. Charlie Arnold's there, uh, Ed Bisping, and um, you know, I think the idea that you can piggyback International Fight Week. What is there a better time? You're already going to have all the media there. You're already going to have uh, the UFC there. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't even know. I, I don't even know what to say because I, it's every time I hear something about Power Slap in terms of a new event, in terms of a new show, in terms of a new idea, I get giddy. Absolutely. You know, ten years out, where do you see Power Slap and slap fighting? It's a great question. Um, I, I just I think you're gonna have guys who are making their living as slap fighters. Um, I think you're gonna have a lot of former MMA guys who get into slap, and I think you're really gonna see guys who are honing the technique. You know, it's you, you see a lot of fouls now. It's still such a new sport. It's in its infancy, and half the time, if you could just get through a slap fight without fouling, you have a shot. Right? I don't think that's going to be the case in a year or two, let alone 10 years from now. I mean, a sport that you obviously you can't, you know, you can't spar, you can't plan getting hit, um, you can't hit a person in real life. So obviously that experience is going to be able to help reduce some of those fouls. I know, you know, Dana, Erica, Frank, they're not happy with the amount of fouls that they're seeing either. Obviously the Athletic Commission continues to refine the rules to try and make it safer, um, you know, for, for the actual fighters themselves. So I do think you're right in regards to that. Um, you know, in terms of the actual, um, you know, the sport, being at the apex, getting it on the road. Do you see this as being a standalone event or do you see them, you know, mixing in, as we are here at, you know, UFC 289, mixing in a power slap event in between MMA fights? I don't know, that's way above my pay grade, but I think the idea of having it on a Friday night in a city where there's gonna be a big UFC event is brilliant. And I, I think they're gonna use July 7th to see how that goes. I think that's a definitely a great tidbit. I'll give you the last word though, Dan. Um, is there anything that you want to say to the early adopters of slap fighting and power slap that have got behind this from day one? Well, first of all, thank you, right? I mean, because they're, they're, really it, it, it is, you're swimming upstream in this, right? We've seen it so far. You hear the critics, they're out there. Listen, nobody's doing this that doesn't want to be doing this. It's an opportunity for these guys to change their lives, and I think a lot of them are taking full advantage of it. And I, I think it's only going to get bigger. It's only going to get better. We're all still learning about the process. There's going to be some rule tweaks, some rule changes, I'm sure. But so far, so good, man. It's been a fun ride. Awesome. I appreciate your time, Dan. Corey Swerger for Slap News at UFC 289 with Dan Helling.